when a man gets married, he's supposed to be free. He's yeah. supposed to be to himself and his wife. That's right. Starting a new home, starting a new family. Very, very right. But then they still don't let go of the rope mm. that ties them mm. uh, to the man. Mm. So they want to come into his house and see how the new wife is behaving. Mm. They want to come into his house to see how the new wife cooks. Mm. Is she taking good care of our brother? <laughs> Okay. Is she taking good care of our son? Mm. But you see, one thing we need to let them know is that for them to be involved at all, the man has to be able to stand and declare this, that look, it's not the right of my mother, mm. it's not the right of my siblings mm. to get involved in my family. Yes, it's right. a privilege and that is if I give them that privilege at all. In-laws in marriage are definitely very important uh, part of the marriage because nobody comes to this world without a family and um, the man who wants to marry or the woman who wants to marry she is from a family before meeting you and in the by the time the marriage is done or by the time you are married to each other her family now become, or the members of her family now become your own family by marriage and yours become her family by marriage. In-laws are relative in marriage or relatives that you acquire, if I can put that, the word acquire by marriage. So which means there must be how to balance your relationship with them. Remember, you don't know them before. It's just through your spouse that you get to know them. Or you may even be friends before. Maybe your spouse and yourself, you live in the same neighborhood or by via your parents, you've known each other for quite some while or you grew together. You may have that opportunity or privilege to know them, but that doesn't happen in all cases. So today, um, this um, 360 degree woman podcast we are going to be discussing about how to relate with our in-laws how to relate how to treat this relative or people that by God's grace we've acquired because of marriage it's not everybody that is given that privilege so if you are married you better say thank you to God because not everyone is a husband material, nor every woman is a wife material. So we are grateful to God if you are married. And if you are not married yet, yours is coming. The Bible says, none shall lack her mate. So your mate is there. Uh, for the man, you're the, the woman that is made for you is out there. And God will make your path to cross beautifully in Jesus' name. So welcome to the 360 Degree Woman Podcast. Today, just for my pre, um, the introduction or the pre talk, uh, the topic that we're going to be having today is about in laws, in laws, in and laws. And with me, as usual, is my wonderful husband, engineer Olusegun Akini. My husband, you are very, very welcome. Thank you very much, my sweetheart. It's a privilege to join you again on this podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so anytime I look beside me and I see you, I'm always very grateful to God. Yeah, and you know, God you know well. why? Yeah. Uh, just like what we want to discuss today, yeah. I'm not, um, I'm not, how do I put it? I'm not just, um, I don't belong to only my family. Mm. If I say my family, is a family of procreation or how do you normally call it orientation, orientation yeah my family of orientation my extended family mm. now i have bigger family mm. and when, when i look at your mother's side i have them mm. when i look at your father's side i have them mm. okay the same thing goes with you yeah. when you look at my mother's side you have my people mm. that you can relate with when you look at my father's side the All same right. thing sure. so look at the way god has ex expanded us right. okay in relation mm. 
see we are no more the two people mm. we are multi people right and in that wise there should be a kind of wisdom mm. on uh, how to relate with them how to really make them part of us mm. how to make them part of the marriage mm. because it is by marriage that we are able to have those families relationship, relationship. Yeah. okay that is the privilege given to us by That's marriage absolutely. so that is why i normally say in marriage before that man and that woman say i do before you allow that love okay to go too deep that you won't be able to reverse back you better uh, make up your mind that you are going to walk through that marriage you are going to do your best in that marriage to make that marriage success because you are not affecting only your spouse right. uh -huh. remember those people that are with your spouse or those relatives or those relations that you're the father the mother and everybody are part of the marriage directly indirectly mm -hmm. that is what they said in-laws brother in-law sister in-law mother you know that is a law mm. governing the relationship between you and them mm. a law okay yeah. there are responsibilities that must be carried out by you and by them to mm. make the marriage work mm. so we are going to be discussing how can we relate with them how can they come into our marriage space mm. that will make the marriage fruitful but we see so many relationship between in-laws and um, the people in the marriage yeah. that the in-laws are the uh how do the instrument to break the marriage at the same time the people in the marriage that is the husband or the wife are the instrument breaking the relationship between the man and his people or between the woman and her people okay. you see it, it, it's it's two way it's somehow yeah. it's so it's so disheartening mm -hmm. it's not something that i believe god wants Okay. When God puts us in a marriage, He wants us to, to be, I mean, happy in it. Right. He wants the people around us to enjoy His beauty in our lives. He wants us to fellowship together. He wants us to form a community okay. that is bounded in love. Yeah. That is why I, 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 some people are even changing the in-law now to in love, which is a better one. Right. If we can walk towards that, yeah. not just by word of mouth. Yeah. My husband. You are the man in the house. You came to me, eh? Proposed to me yeah. very wonderfully sure, well. Sure, I did. Yeah. Hey, hey, you did yeah, exactly, yeah, I did. Sure, I did. exactly. Did yeah, exactly. Right. How many years ago now? Thirty years. Thirty plus. That, 30 plus now. Yeah. You oh, 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 <laughs> glory be to <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. So since then, you've known so many people around me, where I came from. My yeah. father, my mother, and sure. every other person, sure. the same thing with me. How have you been coping? What is making that difference? Okay, how because it's a new terrain for yeah. you, yeah. especially you are from on those states and from ocean states. Can you tell us the secrets of how you've been able to manage or to work with the in laws? Okay, um, you have already uh, laid the foundation that. In-laws become inevitable the moment you say, I do. Mm. In other words, the moment you marry somebody, mm -hmm. your husband or your wife, you definitely have an in-law. Yes. Because you didn't drop mm. from heaven on your wedding day. Mm. God didn't just toss you down from heaven and say, this is your wife. Mm. And you had parents. I mean, you, you got parents. Yes who gave birth to you, who brought you up. Now, I think to relate with in-laws, number one, we have to be understanding. In other words, we have to understand the fact that the in-laws come from a different background. Yes. You are not all from the same background. That's right. You also belong to different generations. Mm. There are one generation ahead of you. Mm. And what they will value, or I mean, what they would hold on to as the key things, may be slightly different from what you see as the most important things now. That's right. And this is where friction comes from most of the time. You see, they want to live their lives again through you mm -hmm. and your spouse. Mm -hmm. 
this is where we all need to be understanding that okay if you understand the fact that they are coming from a different generation mm. you will probably understand why they don't have the same value systems like you have now mm. but it takes understanding also for one to be able to accept them number one you have to love them you have to respect them some people go into marriage with the mindset that they're even praying that they don't have mother-in-law <laughs> no that's not the way let's not do it that way i mm. think it's very wrong mm. to go with that kind of man's uh, mindset mm. that you wish or you pray that you won't have a mother-in-law mm. don't forget that you will grow up one day mm. your own children will marry out mm. and you also become a mother-in-law so if you exactly. are praying for your mother-in-law to die mm. so you can enjoy your marriage um Mm -mm, no, no. You are also kind of indirectly saying to yourself that you don't want to be there when your children are married. It's a seed. So it's a seed, right? It's right. a seed. Absolutely. It's yeah. a seed. So let's have that understanding at the back of our mind that you are not. They are not going to agree with you on everything you do in your new family. They want to still be there in their mm -hmm. own understanding yeah. to guide you mm -hmm. but the guidance they are trying to give you may totally be in conflict with the way you plan to set up your family that is right so it takes wisdom and you need to ask god for that wisdom mm -hmm. to be able to deal with your in-laws mm -hmm. when issues come up number one i think the starting point for you is for you and your wife to agree to work together as a team. That's very right. That's the only way that you can right. beat the opposition. Because mm. when they come like that, mm. they are coming. Well, they, they probably come with a good intention sometimes that they want to help you because they feel they are more experienced than you. You don't know life. They have gone through life. They've mm. experienced ups and downs, mm. and they are in a better position to advise you. But mm. you know the way our models are different they have a different model from what you have mm -hmm. so you have to agree with your wife that we have to agree on the boundaries that's right what do we accept what don't we accept, accept. that way you will be able to work together as a formidable team mm. that way you will be able to set the boundaries clearly that mom dad this is a no-go area exactly. this is our life mm. You've lived your, or you are living your life, you have enjoyed your marriage, thank mm. God for you, now this is my marriage. You know, if it comes to a point where your mother is trying to invade your wife's kitchen, mm. she's telling you, you remember when you were in high school, the agusi soup I used to make for you. I want to make, you know, you used to like it there. It, it's you not supposed to, to be, be clear. Exactly. You have to be clear to mom that mm. mom, mm -hmm. that was those days. So that should this be the responsibility exactly. of the man. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Because uh, my husband, yes. just as you are saying, yeah. the man must be able to defend his home. That's why I talked of building a formidable yeah. team. You exactly. have to agree that yeah. you are one yeah. and you have to work together exactly. as one team. Yeah. So, so men don't see it that way mm. they, they, because naturally a man is closer to the mother, yeah. uh -huh. the, the male child mm. is always very close to the mother's heart and things like that. Yes. So the, 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 the man is thinking that, oh, I don't want to offend my mom. Mm. Oh, I don't want to displease her. Oh, because she's so far mm. to rest. Yeah, that is yeah, women, okay. that is mothers. Fair enough. At the same time, yeah. my husband, yeah. at the same time, nobody is saying any man should dishonor or displease their mom. Yeah. But remember, you are forming i mean you are starting a new family right. and the woman that you are you are married to or that you are married to mm. is from a different family different you brought her from 
her home, yes. where she was comfortable, mm. where she knew the inside and the outside, even in the dark, yeah. she could navigate herself inside the family. Mm. And you are bringing her to a new place entirely. Right. That even when there, are, there is floodlight, yeah. to navigate her way is difficult. It's difficult even yeah. inside floodlight, I understand it's what very you're difficult. Yeah. It, I believe it is the duty of that man yeah. to be able to make the woman comfortable with his people yeah how do i mean the man must be able to stand mm -hmm. beside okay behind right. around the woman yeah okay you said for me team yeah they should first discuss this yeah and make sure every woman wants security exactly i believe it is it is not ordinary or something that a, a, a woman will want nobody around her husband when the husband is misbehaving who is she going to run to mm. But I believe it's because of experiences or the stories that many women, many ladies that have heard yeah. the, the things that they've seen yeah. that is making them to be terrified or that is making them to to see that, oh, if such a, if this is happening, right. then it is my prayer that this man is all alone. Mm -hmm. If you marry a man, ladies or women, if you marry a man that is all alone, no relative, nobody, no... <laughs> you are treading on the dangerous path because exactly. if anything happens there yeah. is no body for you to go and call to right. so remove it from your mind entirely that you want the mother-in-law or the father-in-law or yeah. the kids in law to be dead yeah. dead for what for god's sake who is going to stand beside you when mm -hmm. this man is behaving it's misbehaving sorry who is going to support you who is going to be there for you i know some in-laws are terrible but with the love of Christ yeah. in us, we can win anybody over. Exactly. I'm not telling you that it's that easy. I, I went through mine. So, no, but it's not easy for those in-laws to, to accept you. Yeah. Uh -huh. What they most are tell people, they see you in the first place as an intruder. Exactly. Who is intruding into their son's space. Yeah. The space that they've been occupying. Because now that you are there, when you want to enter the son's uh, room, if they want to enter, they have to knock twice or even more. Mm -hmm. Because you are there. Meanwhile, before, they had the freedom to barge into, into the room yeah. of their son. Mm -hmm. But now you are there. I mean, as the wife. So they have to be very careful. And you know what it means? Where you had freedom before, and there's like now you are being controlled or restrained from... Yeah having what you normally have free it 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 it, 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 it both ways it both ways yeah. it's both ways just like my husband said we need to ask for the wisdom of god it's not easy to make new friends even naturally right. when you are in a gathering you look you check you don't just go to people and become their best friend no. the same thing with in-laws i remember you are going to live together till the end of life yeah. so it's it's a big weight on them as much as it's a big weight on the woman or the man. But my husband, there's something I discover again is that the man in the marriage yeah. always have it easier with the wise people. Okay, because this, the first thing they see in that man experience. Okay, at least I've been, I've been proposed to for the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. I should be able to say something. They see that man as their own son. Okay, yeah. they easily welcome the man, but why is it that difficult for the woman to be accepted when it comes to the husband's people, when it comes to the in-laws, the relatives from the man? Why do you have? I don't know. Maybe you have an insight. I don't know, or it should be it should be it be me that should be able to explain because it's it's that is just part of the problem. Not uh, all the families. Yeah, I understand. Some families are very wonderful, yeah. I must say. But some families are something else. Yeah, I understand that that um, it's difficult for people from the husband's family to accept their daughter-in-law. Mm. Um, they see her as someone that needs to accept them but they don't necessarily see themselves as people who have to accept her. Oh. So it's tilted one way. Mm. But 
generally they want the culture of the family to remain mm. in other words this is how we have been running the show before you came now you have to join us if you cannot beat us i mean you cannot beat us really so you just have to join us that's the way they take it and so they want to indoctrinate you the new wife in the way of their family they see mm. themselves still as part of the husband mm. who just got married mm. they don't realize that there is a breaking point mm. when a man gets married he's supposed to be free He's yeah. supposed to be to himself and his wife. That's right. Starting a new home, starting a new family. Very, very right. But then they still don't let go of the rope mm. that ties them mm. uh, to the man. Mm. So they want to come into his house and see how the new wife is behaving. Mm. They want to come into his house to see how the new wife cooks. Mm. Is she taking good care of our brother? <laughs> Okay. Is she taking good care of our son? Mm. But you see, one thing we need to let them know is that for them to be involved at all, the man has to be able to stand and declare this, that look, it's not the right of my mother, mm. it's not the right of my siblings mm. to get involved in my family. Yes, it's right. a privilege. And that is if I give them that privilege at all. Mm. You can curtail that privilege altogether. That look, guys, this is my home. This is my space. It's mm. my territory. Yeah. You don't have any business here. Mm. Leave me alone to handle my affairs. If I need you guys, if I need your advice, I will come to you. Mm. I think if we make that very clear at the beginning, mm. then maybe people will learn to put themselves where they belong mm. and not just go trespassing on another person's territory. Mm. Because it's like trespass now. Yeah. So that's the way I look at it and I don't think it's their right. Mm. It's not. I would say it's not really. Emphatically, mm. it's not the right of my parents. Mm. To come into my family i mean as much as possible when you have your issues you yeah. and your wife yeah. try to resolve those issues without going now to consult anybody that's right if you don't go and consult them i don't think they will necessarily i mean you if that's if they even know you have an issue at all mm -hmm. but usually it's because some of us run back to our parents to mm -hmm. go and tell them oh i have an issue with mm -hmm. my wife that's when they now start to come to say, okay, let's come and settle for you, but your differences, because they believe they are more experienced than you, mm. because you gave them that opportunity mm, to come in. To come in. That's you right. never gave them the opportunity, like my mm. wife said in one of our podcasts, that she told her mom, that mom, the day I come to you to report that my husband did this or that, just know that we have already separated, because I will never come to you. Exactly. Yeah, so she set the boundary mm. at that point that, look, mom, it's not your business. Mm. Whatever happens in my husband's army with my husband between the two of us is our business, yes. not your business. Mm. So when you set the boundary like that, I think it's clear to them that these people don't want interference. Yeah. So let's just yeah. leave them alone. Let's yeah. pray for them. Yeah. Let's work with them. Yeah. Yeah. And when they come around, yeah. I think you should... We need to respect them. Yes, they are exactly. Our parents, yeah, my wife's parents. Yes, or maybe my own parents yes. as well. Yes, we even the brothers and sisters. Exactly, exactly. We should see them as part of us. Yeah. Because that is who they are. Exactly. The moment we say I do, just yeah. like what you said. Yeah. The moment the woman says I do, mm -hmm. you have to bring those family. Yeah into yours yes. and we see the two yeah, the families, families becoming you know, stronger become one, one. they have things in common, in common. and everyone is happy together exactly. because of your association your marriage marriage exactly so we should be the the force yeah. right behind the love yeah amongst the two exactly if we don't do that if we, if we are not that strong mm. because we need to be there for the for the two sides exactly. for the two families yeah. if we are not strong enough we are not bringing them together in love we are creating something that is not pleasing mm. unto god right and um let me say this i just i want to appreciate my husband because he is from on those stage where they speak different language though they speak yoruba too which is my local yeah. Uh, language in Nigeria, but I I remember that 
each time my mother-in-law she slept now each time she was in the house mm. she was used to speaking the dialect, the dialect yeah. and instead of my husband to return uh, to reply to her back in that dialect my husband would rather reply back in yoruba mm -hmm. which the one that i understand yeah. so uh, by his re uh, response i was able to know what the discussion was mm. see another person will just respond back in that same dialect yeah, and the, yes. the spouse will be in uh, will be confused, will be confused. Yeah, and yes. that will be, be be the source of problem yeah, it could create yeah, friction, it could create friction. The husband and the wife. Exactly, exactly. It appear as if maybe the, you and they were discussing. are discussing and you don't want mm -hmm. your wife to, to know. know about the discussion. Exactly. So try and be as open and as plain open. as possible so that yeah. everybody will know this is your policy. Yes. You are not, I mean, we cannot use our dialect now yeah. to separate ourselves. Exactly. Let's speak in a common language exactly. that all of us can understand. Yes. Yeah, that's part of the things we need to agree. And one mm. other thing I would like to talk about is mm. the issue of in-laws barging in mm. to your house. Mm. That there must be... Yeah, this is something... You have to be very careful. You need to discuss yeah. with your spouse. Mm -mm. Do we want to allow this or do we set boundaries from the beginning and tell them, guys, if mm. you are going to visit me for any purpose, for any reason, mm. I need at least notice. That they, they be, Some people, my yes, husband, some people, especially in, uh, in our own culture, yeah. they may think, why should they, why do they have to give you notice? Yeah. That is a common thing when you feel like, you, you feel like, Mark my word, you feel like seeing your son, or you feel like seeing your brother, <laughs> or you feel like seeing your daughter. Yeah. I can just carry my bag and go. Yeah. Hey, things are changing. The, the something is good. It's a good one because some people in uh, are living abroad, we are uh, experience some a kind of loneliness. Yeah. Nobody comes to see you. You are all alone and this side the cold and things like that. That is the rich part of our culture yeah. the ability to go and visit each other to spend some time with each other will without stay notice. Uh, without yeah maybe without notice <laughs> yeah. but if the notice is there that will be oh that yeah. will be also yeah we are relational being yeah. in in that part of the world at the same time the thing is those people that you the, the family or the couple or your son and your daughter that you want to go and say hello to without notice Financially, they may not be there at that particular time, and they may want to satisfy you by all means, making them to go and borrow, and making them to feel uncomfortable. It would be a good advice, it would be a good practice, if we can at least let them know that we are coming. Mm -hmm. And when we go there, don't let us um, go out of uh, the boundary, don't let us uh, take over the house. Don't take over your your well, your son's wife's kitchen. Yeah. Just like my husband said, don't say I want to prepare that meal that I normally prepare for you that you love so much. Now he's married. Yes. Mama is married. Let the wife take her place. Let her prepare the food that she knows how to prepare. Don't just don't confuse them. Mm -hmm. Let the woman be. Yeah. They've been together like that. Feeding she's been feeding her husband mm -hmm. since they got married. Why is it now that you are coming? that you want yeah. to change the diet <laughs> yeah. now you see that your son is getting thinner and thinner no. and now ah, the yeah. wife is there let her take over exactly. let's 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 go let us uh how do i put it let's free ourselves from this body mm -hmm. yeah the man shall live mm -hmm. his father and, and his mother father. and cleave yeah. let's allow them to cleave most of us mothers mothers especially we are not allowing our sons to cleave to their wives let's yeah. allow them there's going to be another podcast by god's grace that we are going to be talking about the new generation in-laws mm. or the new generation mothers in law okay. the new generation. so we see because we need to break this yeah. we need to be, that, is, that is why some women are clamoring for their mother-in-law to die mm -hmm. they don't want the husband to have a mother it's just because of all they want to be free who doesn't like freedom? But ladies, women out there, freedom at the same time uh, has a cost to it. Yeah. You want to be free alone with your husband? When trouble comes, where will you go to? Mm. 
If you have a prayer warrior mother-in-law, it is better for you to be close to that woman. Remember, that woman brought your husband to this life. Right. Without her, there won't be any husband. Mm. If she doesn't go through those pain, those stressful time yeah. to nurture your husband, that the way when you saw or when he came to you, yeah. you could say yes. If he brought up a non-entity, I believe you won't want to marry that man. Sure. But for her to put in that that effort to nurture the man, have respect unto this woman. She may not have it all. She may not have the kind of education that you have. She may not have the kind of experience or exposure the modern exposure that you have. Mm -hmm. She may not know how to eat properly. Mm -hmm. She may not know how to dress well. Yeah. She may not even be anybody. But remember, she he was in the, I mean, this particular state yes. or something was when she gave birth to that man. Right. And she was able to nurture that man. Mm -hmm. Let's have respect yeah. to our mother's in-law. Let's have respect to our husband's relatives. The same thing goes to the, to the man. Your wife's mother mm -hmm. or your wife's people may be lesser than you. Yeah. They may not have that money that you have. They may not have that education that you have in your family. You may be a family of academics, right? Yeah. That you are professors, you are that. But your wife's side, mm -hmm. they may not have any. They may be illiterate. Yeah. It may often only be your wife that is educated. Awesome. And that's why you're able to marry her. Right. Remember, those people do the suffer. Yes. They put in so much effort right. to make sure that your wife is uh, the person you are married to now, that you are married to, yeah. is a wife material. Yeah. They trained her, they brought her up, that you will be able to say, this is the one I want to spend, you spend the rest of my life with. Exactly. Treat them with respect. Just I want to say my husband, treat them with respect. Ladies or wives, when your mother-in-law, your, mother your husband relatives come, don't give them your leftover inside your pot. Mm. And when your people come, you give them the best that's part of the meal. That's a good idea. It is not yeah. good. God is watching. Yeah. If they don't have the prayer to look inside the pot, but God is watching. Mm. Treat them the same way. Treat them equally. Yeah. What you can give your own parents or your own people, do the same thing to the in-laws. Please. Yeah. Please, if you can allow your your husband to sponsor your people to school or to do something good for them, encourage him mm -hmm. to do the same thing for his people. Exactly. Don't snatch him away from them, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, we are mothers and we have children too. Mm -hmm. And these children are going to get married. Do we want the same thing? Mm -hmm. Do we want us to be neglected because our sons or our daughters are married? Definitely no. We want to enjoy them. So allow his people to, to enjoy them. Some people are difficult, I understand. Some in-laws are very extremely difficult. There is nothing you can do yeah. that will satisfy them. Sure. But leave that to God. Do whatever you can do and let every, anybody say whatever they want to say. Let them say whatever they want to say. They have their own opinion. Yeah. But no deep inside do. You are doing what you are supposed to be doing. I remember when we just got married, right? In just um, Plato State in Nigeria. That mama was about to come, my mother in law. Okay. Well, yeah, I remember that time. Yeah, I remember I went, was it in the I was there? I remember I had to go to the market. I bought a new Ankara, this uh, vegetable wax yeah, yeah, <laughs> fabric. Yeah. And I was able to make, yeah, when she came to George, jo yeah, I didn't know how to sew then. Yeah. I brought all uh, my, my clothes. Because I think they were almost the same size, yeah. <laughs> the same height, almost. So maybe my mom was a little taller than me. Yeah, something like that. So I brought out my material, my clothes, for her to wear because yeah. that was what I was being brought up with. That was yeah. what, what I saw yeah. in my mother. Right. Uh -huh. When anybody comes to visit you, you have to yeah. give them your clothes to wear, yeah, to, to change. change. So I brought those things once out and she was amazed. And when she came to Abu Dhabi, we left Jaws. Yeah. I would run to the market, buy new fabric, yeah. make sure that was when, when I knew how to make so uh, the cultural buba wrapper. Yeah. So I'll make about two minimum for her, yeah. so that when she comes, I mean, she's wearing new things. Yeah. That was my own mind, mm. and my mind when I got married was I want her to be my mother mm. because you will know, get that one later in any of my books, yeah. my story. My relationship with my mother but that let's leave that for another day but let us see this woman 
as her own mother, I mean, see your husband's mom mm -hmm. as your own mom. Right. See the people as your own people mm -hmm. until they prove otherwise. If they prove otherwise, don't force them. Just let them be. Mm -hmm. That is it. My husband. Yeah. Okay, um, maybe one more thing I would like to talk about is uh, the need for both the husband and the wife to share their concerns. If you do have a concern regarding your maybe mother-in-law or father-in-law, the first person you should discuss this concern with is your husband or your wife. Let him or her know that you don't like the way these people are taking these things or you don't like the way your brother's in-law are mm. treating the house when they visit. Yeah. You no, know, your your husband, if you tell him such, I think he should take it up. You no, know, it's not a case of trying to divide their family of orientation. It's a case of trying to build your own family, your new family that you have started with your husband. So the husband, I believe the husband or the man should actually uh, stand with their wife on these issues. If she has a genuine concern, don't see it as a case of now you are trying to divide us. We've been mm. up together for mm. 20 years. Mm. Thank now you, you just came last year and you are trying you. to divide us. So uh. make sure you understand properly where you stand mm. and don't try to be the problem now mm. because if you now start to go and tell them your my wife said you my wife said this yeah you, you need wisdom yeah we all need wisdom exactly we should ask god to give us wisdom Amen. when the need arises but Amen. situations like that demands tact yes it demands that you be diplomatic mm. in handling otherwise it might explode in your hands mm. and if it does it might just be what will blast your family mm. apart so Wonderful. men we need to be very careful exactly exactly and it works both ways as well I mean, if it's you who has a concern about your mother-in-law, as a man, be free to mm. discuss with your wife. Mm. Mm. I don't know what your mom did yesterday. Mm. I'm just trying to. I mean, so let you, you should be on the same page. On That's issues. right. That's, That's the right. way you can actually handle and mm. resolve issues without any repercussions. Yeah. But if you are seeing yourselves as maybe competitors, or you are seeing your family as maybe your, your wife is unnecessarily harsh she mm. wants to keep your family away mm. where well, it might bring some animosity between you and your wife mm. and that may affect your family mm. so we need to have this understanding and yes. feel free to discuss our concerns with one another exactly. that's the only way we can jointly handle issues and move on of yes. course these in-laws are not going to be with you forever mm -mm. There's a time limit for yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, it gets to a point when, of course, your family is grown and they know they have to find their way. They yeah. have to visit you less frequently and all that. Yeah. They will come to that. Yes. Um, my wife, I think you, I need to let you. Exactly. Um, this inner thing is a it's a big one. Uh, we we can't just uh, we can't finish it no. under forty minutes <laughs> yeah. or so. Just just like uh, here and there. Yeah. So in conclusion, from me is that. Um, the wisdom that we need to handle our in-laws, I mean, our really husband or spouses, people, yeah. that will bring harmony, that will bring love, that will bring peace into our home. The God Almighty will release such unto us in Jesus' name. Yeah. But the bulk of the issue rests upon the shoulders of the man. Please, men be the man or be the man that God has called you to be. I think that is why your shoulders are wide. That's on lighter mood. So please, please and please um, make the woman to feel secured even in the midst of your people. And wives, love, love, love and love. Give love and you will see God uh, giving you much, much love back in your home. We shall express uh, God's blessings in our marriages. Our homes shall be full of the favor, the honor, the glory of the Most High God. And wherever our children go, and wherever they marry, the family they are going to be married to, shall be the greatest, our heart desires, and they shall have peace. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everyone, again. Thank you for being there. We'll be getting wonderful feedback from the podcast so far. Continue to subscribe, 
continue to click the like button and continue please to spread the good works of god in this podcast god bless you we appreciate you in jesus name be blessed amen